Let's pray together. Almighty God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we bless you for each of these students graduating here today. We thank you for the blessings they have been to their families, to our school, and to one another. We thank you for those whose love and care and support have enabled them to reach this day. May your blessing be upon us as we mark this milestone in the lives of these families, our school, and most especially the class of 2023. For these graduating seniors, we ask that you would guide, protect, and strengthen them as they leave this place that they may build upon the strong foundation of sound learning they have cultivated here. Give them the courage to choose the good, the true, and the beautiful, and the determination and resolve to lead lives of faith, honor, and knowledge. May they aspire to excellence, and may they find their zeal for learning perfected in their knowledge of you, the source and author of all truth, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Porter Gow and our faculty and staff, I am honored to welcome you to our commencement for the class of 2023. Despite the weather, we are delighted to be together this evening, honoring this exceptional class, celebrating the ways our lives have intersected, and honoring all they have accomplished in their years at Porter Gow. I'm pleased that the class of 2023 experienced a senior year full of our normal traditions and milestones. Their first three years in the upper school required resilience and perseverance, and it felt good to celebrate so many special moments again this year. We were also proud to celebrate 50 years of women at Porter Gow, especially with a class of so many gifted female leaders. We are thankful for all of you here tonight who have supported these graduates, this school, and its mission of faith, honor, and knowledge. I especially want to recognize the faculty this evening. Please join me in thanking them for their grace, care, compassion, and counsel for this school. This year, my own Porter Gow class celebrated our 30-year reunion. Julie Long hosted us on a beautiful evening in April, and we had a large percentage of our class of 63 graduates in attendance. We have stayed remarkably in touch as a group over these years, mainly due to annual efforts of our class leaders to get us together, beginning back in our college years. This has strengthened our friendships and enriched our lives over three decades. We even have a group text thread going with more than half the class. They're currently arguing over the musical genius of Guns N' Roses, Pearl Jam, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Nirvana. As we highlighted in Tuesday's Unity Assembly, we share the bonds of this place and this Porter Gow experience that holds us together. The school was a lot smaller for us, fewer teachers, no Wendell Center, no upper school building, or even the S&T building. We had fewer sports teams and far less choice in courses. But like this senior class, we had a diverse group of artists and writers and scientists and singers and poets and mathematicians and historians. They are now doctors and leaders in conservation and lawyers and politicians and priests and engineers and professors. And several of them are parents of graduates this evening. And like you, we had teachers who loved us and cared about us and pushed us to do our very best. And we come back to visit them and thank them for the difference they made in our lives. All of this is what I hope for you, seniors, that you will actually become closer as a class and realize what amazing and talented people are sitting next to you. And that you will continue to learn from each other and to support one another in years to come. As Father Kennedy compelled us all at baccalaureate, I hope that in 30 years you will not only be climbing the right ladder, but will also be holding the ladders for your classmates, helping them to find the right steps, and being there to catch them if they fall. 
Congratulations, class of 2023. We look forward to hearing where your ladders take you, and we hope that you know you will always have a home here and a place to rest as you climb. Charleston humidity, the little curly-headed kindergartner with buck teeth and big eyes wondered how many more days she would have to wait until she could call this green her own. On her fingers, she tried to calculate exactly how much longer she needed to exercise this virtue of patience for, how many more months, days, seconds, until she could share Portugal with her dad and the rest of the big kids. Fast forward a few months to first grade. And there I was, swimming in a Portugal jumper much too big for my own body, trekking across the green after a long day, which consisted of a spelling test that wasn't so brutal after all, a fierce game of zombie tag that didn't actually involve the undead, and an herb-crusted salmon filet and a slice of icebox pie for lunch. PG life was everything I'd imagined it to be, 
and returning from extended day after school, I remember hoping that Porter Gow also offered four years of college right here. After learning that Porter Gow was in fact only a 12 year school, I was, and still am, sort of disappointed. I'm hesitant to shed my Porter Gow uniform and replace it with my own clothes, partly because my closet boasts about three presentable non-uniform outfits, but mainly because Garnet and Gray have doubled as my bubble wrap armor for so long. Porter Gow has protected me, and it's indescribably difficult to let all of this, all of you go. To our extraordinary teachers here, thank you. You have nurtured us, giving all that you can give to shape us into the people that we are. More than just subject matter, you all have taught us what it means to live deeply and meaningfully, and have exemplified living a life tied to the pursuit of faith, honor, and knowledge. Thank you for caring so much about who every single person in this graduating class really is, and for assisting us in our journeys of becoming who we want to be. It is because of you that we are us. I'll miss being stopped in the hallway with a smile from Dr. Westerman, a wave from Mrs. Adelson, a hug from Mrs. Downing, a chat with Mr. Perron, a conversation with Mr. Romano, a gossip session with Mr. Meyer, or a shared laugh with Mr. Renton. But most of all, I know I'll especially miss getting to spend time with Mrs. Tao, my Chinese teacher, or as I like to call her, my school mom since first grade. Though not often recognized for all the good she does around here, Mrs. Tao has shown me and prepared me for the world. You have changed my life. Without you, I wouldn't know who I am now, and I certainly wouldn't know any Mandarin either. So, for all that you do, thank you to all the faculty for defining Porter Gout's culture as home. We will miss you dearly. To the Porter Gout staff, Thank you for caring for us by caring for this place. Without you, we wouldn't leave with such sweet memories. Convocation, the annual Halloween carnival, holiday assemblies, lunchtime laughs, and even this ceremony today were all made possible by your love. To the Porter Gout administration, thank you. Mr. Hilpert, Mrs. Davis, Ms. Rigel, Father Kennedy, and Dr. Sepulveda aren't your typical school administrators. They do anything for us, even set up graduation ceremonies both outdoors and indoors just to hold out hope that it wouldn't rain. Everywhere they go, they're doing their jobs with a smile on their face and genuine care for each student who has ever passed through the Porter Gout gates. To my friends, Anne, Emily, and Anna Caroline, thank you. I will treasure every single memory we've made together, and I know that you all will continue to thrive because of your kindness and love for others. To our families, thank you. Speaking on behalf of everyone here, we are honored to have been raised by you. I'd like to especially thank my own family for all being here to support me today. Grandma and Grandpa, you've worked so hard to make every memory we have together special. From picking me up at the JCC preschool to picking up every FaceTime call, I love you. Mimi and Papa, you both make me smile so brightly and laugh so hard. You've taught me how to treat others, how to be authentically generous, and how to make the meanest apple pie around. I love you. To my extended family, Aunt Kim, Uncle Andy, Aunt Caitlin, Uncle Dave, Aunt Dahlia, Uncle Dave number two, Andrea, Ed, Edwin, Katie, and my adorable cousins, I couldn't have made it without your support. I love you all. To Zach, you're who I want to be when I grow up. You are the funniest, most sincere, most interesting person I've ever met. And everyone around you is a better person for having known you. I love you so incredibly much, but you're always welcome to come party it up with me in New Haven, anytime. To mom, I know that the job of mother can oftentimes be thankless, but here's a dedicated thank you. Through your immense care and steadfast love, you've shown me how to be a strong woman, how to believe in myself, stick up for what I believe is right, 
and accomplish my dreams. Thank you for your abiding support. I love you to the moon and back. And for this last thank you, indulge me as I briefly digress. If you know me, you probably understand my love for the TV show series Gilmore Girls and my almost compulsive need to make a reference to it. I've watched all seven seasons seven times. Growing up, I always saw Rory Gilmore as the wittier version of myself. But in fairness, her quips are scripted and most of mine are off the cuff. I'd always thought that my life oddly mirrored hers, yet each time I've rewatched the series, I've naturally realized more of our differences. In the show, Lorelai, her mom, and Rory are inseparable. They're two best friends who just so happen to be parent and child. High school proves to be tough, but Rory has Lorelai to come home to. From giving advice on relationship problems to helping Rory study for an impossible assessment on Shakespeare, Lorelai is always there. But I, unlike Rory, do not have a Lorelai Gilmore. I have an Aaron Lehman. And I didn't just spend 20 -some, seven seasons of 20-something 45-minute episodes with them. For 12 entire years, I got to be luckier than a fictional character. My dad, my mentor, my English teacher, my hero, and my best friend got to be at school with me every single day. Funnily enough, it was actually him giving the impossible assessment on Shakespeare. I can confidently say that I have it better than Roy Gilmore. I didn't ever have to actually go home for home to be with me. Dad, thank you for being even better than fiction. Thank you for filling my mind and heart with poems. Thank you for all the times that I've had a Coke with you and for the countless days that we've spent together catching tigers in red weather. I love you so much. Finally, to the class of 2023, We've all walked on the green on less soggy days. Whether we've done it since first, sixth, ninth, or sometime in between, we've all walked on, across, or near the green hundreds, if not thousands of times. It's been a long journey. We've had our triumphs, but as all my classmates sitting here know, that's not to say that high school, even in the most idyllic of places, is free of struggle. Anxiety, stress, scraped knees, bad grades, never-ending Zoom calls, difficult relationships, and teenage angst abounded. But we've needed all of that to be standing right here today, calling this place a home. Actually, most of my teenage angst and anxiety during this year, as all AP Lit students can attest, was rooted in James Joyce's prose. A portrait of the artist as a young man features Stephen Daedalus on his own journey of self-discovery, and plenty of confusing words worth words. Ulysses, the novel that follows Portrait, though, is a whole different beast. It's about Stephen Daedalus and this other guy, Leopold Bloom, and the long Odyssean walk they take back home. Bloom, in particular, spends the day walking to avoid a deeply painful reckoning with his past, present, and future, crossing his own greens on the way. After 500 pages, Bloom comes to a strange realization. Think you're escaping yourself. And run into yourself, he thinks. Longest way round is the shortest way home. It's a paradox, isn't it? How can the longest way around something, all the struggle, the difficulty, the confusion, be the shortest way home? How could that possibly be? Bloom just like all of us, needed a struggle to get home. To arrive at the same place, to arrive at home, we need opportunities to prove ourselves and to lose ourselves just a little bit. And we did both. Whether you're traveling far away for college or staying close by, we've all taken our own long ways round to get there. And the best part is, we seem to have made Porter Gowder home in the meantime. Even though we're graduating, wherever we go, we'll always run into the bits of ourselves made here by so many other selves at Porter Gallup. The shortest way home won't be by car, plane, or train. It'll be as simple as thinking of all the people that have loved us here. 
So, maybe Poor Gab does offer a college after all. Even though it's not a conventional physical college, you'll bring Porter Gowd and all the people that you've loved here with you. Although I may be saying my last goodbye to the green that raised me, I'll always be able to walk it around and around and around in my mind. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Carry this place and these people everywhere you go. Thank you. have a conversation with the person that put this quarter together. Wow. The 12 Year Society consists of those students that began their educational journey here at Corrigal in the first grade. This year's group <clears throat> features scholars, artists, athletes, leaders on campus, and in our community who have all contributed to the growth of this special place for the last 12 years. We would like to congratulate all of these students on a wonderful Porter career and would like to thank their families for their 12-year commitment to this school. It is my pleasure to introduce the 12-year society to you seniors. I will call your name as we know you. Please stand and remain standing when I do so. Lucas Acevedo, Hayden Alfonso, Jason Amer, Charles Black, Kelly Carswell, Langdon Chevis, Patton Galloway, Dylan Greenslade, Anna Lehman, Ethan Learman. Jimmy Ledden, Mills Long, Turner Long, Dee Dee Lucas, Bryce Marion, Daniel Mirenblatt, Bo Porter, Harper Raymond, Shay Smith, Asa Snyder, Anna Caroline Simons, Luca Tazi, George Walton, and Cole Yarborough. Congratulations. Uh, before I give the Bennett Award a note of clarification and apology. Clarification is that I am not Child Smith of the English Department. I am Aaron Lehman of the English Department. And the apology is that I am not Child Smith of the English Department. Uh, if he were giving this award, he would give it with his signature charm and grace. But I keep bringing me up. The late Charleston attorney, John Bennett, established the John H. Bennett English Award to honor his grandfather who, with DeVos Hayward and Josephine Pinckney, founded the Poetry Society of South Carolina, the oldest such organization in the country. The Bennett Award honors an exemplary PG senior who produces outstanding writing. I have a multiple choice question for you. Don't worry, there's no essay test at the end. Which brilliant modern literary theorist once asked but what fun is literature if it doesn't reflect the ugliness of you? A, Sigmund Freud. B, T.S. Eliot. C, Harold Bloom. Or D, the best read senior Porter Gowd's English department has ever seen. Confused? Let's try some more. Who among us has spliced Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales into yearbook captions. Who won both Porter Gowd's poetry and essay contests in the same year? 
Who will spend the summer working on a paper for the James Joyce Quarterly? Who devoured Joyce's Ulysses as if it were the next installment of Outer Banks? Which teenager has peered into literature strangeness, its absurdities, its densities, its ugliness, and found there truth and goodness and beauty? There's only one answer, of course, and that is the 2023 Bennett Award winner, Ethan Joseph Lair. scholarship and excellent teaching remains the standard for the history department. This honor is given to a student who has demonstrated Mr. Norton's devotion to scholarship, pursuit of truth, and passion for history. In a fantasy draft, there are always sleeper picks, which is a term for players expected to outperform their preseason ranking and prove an unanticipated advantage for the team. With regard to our award recipient, this meaning doesn't really work since his performance as a scholar has been nothing if not elite and expected. But since he is nodded off in my class and Dr. Westerman's class on occasion, I couldn't resist the illusion. Don't worry, this student can endure a little ribbon. He's built up the stamina posted up in the key. And is so gifted, and according to Dr. Westerman, possessing such an incisive mind for history and government, he could make perceptive connections that pushed his peers to think more deeply about what we were learning. Perceptive is a good descriptor, as is intellectual. Mr. Greenwell noted that this student's intellectual wattage ranks among the very brightest of any student under his tutelage over two decades. I also witnessed this student not only excel in my history classroom, but command the courtroom and youth in government, both at the bar and at the bench. Unequivocally, if we were to build a roster of historians who would offer our team an enormous upside, this student would be a first round pick. It gives the History Department great pleasure to present the 2023 Ralph Norlin Award to David Axon. honey drizzle the top decadent desserts, to the bees wax had formed the tablets upon which they would write. Bees were a familiar and integral part of Roman society. Describing the Carthaginians at work building their new city, the poet Virgil once wrote, like bees under an early summer sun, leading a new swarm out to the wild flowers, or stuffing honey into the comb, swelling the cells with nectar, or unloading the pollen other bees bring to the stall, or yet Wording off the worthless broods of wasps, the busy hive seeds with all their activity. I found in my first year of Porter Gow that my students were akin to Virgil's bees, buzzing about in the hive of my classroom. While most of them were diligent worker bees, always completing their tasks with neither complaint nor delay, there was one that stood out. If others were pollinators, warriors, and nectar barriers, this student sat atop the hive as our resident queen bee. She showed a zeal for both the language and the culture that reminded me of my experience in high school lab, absorbing every detail of the Aeneid that I slowly and painfully at times wound out. It is my absolute pleasure to present this year's lab award to Ms. Cora Elizabeth Miller. Good evening. I have the honor of 
presenting the Chinese Award. In 2011, I met today's recipient for the first time in her first grade Chinese class. After the first quarter, I wrote on her report card saying, this student models excellent classroom behaviors and displays an enthusiasm for learning Chinese all the time. This comment is no less true 12 years later. From that point forward, I had the pleasure of spending nine years together with this remarkable young lady on a journey of learning Chinese. She has used every opportunity possible to learn, to practice, to improve, and to fulfill this passion. From my various honor Chinese classes to AP Chinese, from creating handmade boxes and singing songs in our classroom, to performing on stage for the local Chinese community. From participating in an online Chinese summer camp to emerging herself in the language in Taiwan. Her unwavering pursuit of excellence has remained a constant throughout. Without a doubt, she's one of the most hardworking, driven, motivated, and ambitious students I've ever had the privilege of teaching. Over these 12 years, she has mastered the Chinese language with such advanced proficiency that I can talk to her all day long in Chinese. I promise it's not just because I don't know how to speak any other language. <laughs> Even though I have written her 35 more comments after the first one, and in many recommendation letters, the words in that first report still hold true to this day. In fact, I found it fitting to conclude today's interaction with the same words I used at the end. Very impressive, he took the nice word. As she leaves Porter Gal, I believe that she is ready to make an unforgettable impact on the world. I am proud to announce that today's Chinese award goes to my Baizi, my dearest student, Anna Lehman. to our classmates to learn that Chloe Allison is tonight recipient of the French Award. Chloe completed an outstanding career of French at Portugal. She did so with the right amount of sass, an always friendly smile, and a thirst for knowledge. It is true that she crafted superlative essays and emails, that she presented, presented marvelously tailored projects, and that she earned a silver badge literacy. But, as I pondered upon this homage, I could not help wondering what would stay engraved in my memory. Would it be her daily greeting of Bonjour, Queen? Would it be the fact that she appeared in my classroom early, every Tuesday, for the past year and a half, to practice her skills? Or would it be her caring attitude towards her friends and community? And how would I forget our epic summer work videos recorded live from a restaurant or an airport in Ghana where she was doing some volunteering work? Well, I believe that it will be all of this and more. It has been a true honor and pleasure to teach Chloe for the past two years. But it has, all, it has equally been special to see her blossom from a sweet little five grade girl playing volleyball with my own daughter to a wonderfully kind and well-rounded young woman. I am confident that she will continue to shine as she embarks on her next endeavor at UCLA. And I am certain that our French Mimi is very proud, proud of her accomplishment. Congratulations, Chloe. I will miss you dearly.
Buenas tardes. The Moody Spanish Award was established in 1978 by Dr. Maxwell Murray, a former quarter gown instructor of Spanish, in memory of his parents. Wade Davis, a revered Canadian cultural anthropologist in residence at the National Geographic Society, has argued in the most beautiful terms that language is much more than vocabulary and grammatical rules. Each language is a unique expression of the human imagination and heart with its own answers to a fundamental question. What does it mean to be human and alive? This year's recipient of the Spanish Award has captured the culture, heart, nuance, struggle, justice, and freedom that is represented by the nearly 60 million people here in the U.S. alone who speak the language and live it out loud. As a freshman, she fell in love with our annual Locura de Marzo music bracket and hasn't stopped loving it since. As a junior, she excelled in every aspect of the AP course, earning the working fluency distinction at the advanced low level of the Global Seal of Biliteracy. This year, in the Advanced Spanish Studies course and throughout her time at Porter Gal, she has used her voice as a Spanish speaker to empathetically engage with and understand the cultural practices that are intimately woven into the language and will take this lens and an expanded repertoire with her as she engages in the vital process of reinventing the poetry of diversity, perhaps the most important challenge of our times. If, as Davis says, language is an old growth forest for the mind and each has its own cadence, she has thoughtfully acquired the rhythm of other ways of thinking and orienting herself to the earth. This should give us all hope. It has certainly given it to me. It is with admiration, pride, and a full heart that I present this year's Spanish Award to Anna Caroline Simon. and outside-the-box thinking. We anticipate brilliance in the classroom, but we deeply anticipate appreciate those students who expect, extend their exploration of technology and passion for computer science far beyond the course syllabus. Today I have the privilege to present this year's Computer Science Award to the student who modifies all these qualities. Cole Yarber. Cole is an outstanding talent, one of our most proficient coders, who is continually demonstrating an unwavering commitment to excellence in computer science. As his teacher and advisor through his high school years, I've often found myself more as a guide or mentor to him, nudging him in the right direction and then watching him exceed all expectations. Behind Cole's quiet demeanour is a dry sense of humour that comes as a surprise to those who truly get to know him. As a junior, Cole led our eSports Rocket League team to our first ever national finals for the whole of the East Coast, demonstrating a fierce competitiveness ruthlessness and a quiet leadership that won the respect of his peers. And even if it pains me and his teammate Henry to admit it, he is probably our finest ever rocket league player. In the realm of coding, his diligence and tenacity sign through. Cole doesn't merely meet expectations, he constantly exceeds them. In his junior year, he crafted an exceptional virtual college tour, creating a rich, immersive experience. During his senior year, he collaborated with Henry to develop a cybersecurity capture of the flag website a valuable resource for future generations of Porter Gow students. As a member of our Computer Science Honor Society and a vital part of a cybersecurity team, he has repeatedly proven his worth. As your high school advisor, I have had the pleasure to witness your incredible growth and development. You have left an intelligible mark here at Porter Gow. Stanford University is gaining a remarkable talent, a young man who knows how to work diligently delivered impressive results and infused everything he does with a subtle sense of humour. His impact on our programme and school will endure. I have no doubt that Cole Garber will accomplish incredible things in the future. 
We eagerly anticipate witnessing his future achievements, secure in the knowledge that he will carry his talents, dedication and unique perspective into the next chapter. It is with great pleasure that I present yesterday's Computer Science Award to Cole Yarborough. Congratulations to Cole. shown to be the outstanding young scientist of the class. This is based on high grades, participation in science courses, and overall interest in some field of science beyond the classroom. Whether engaged in a titration in AP chemistry, or researching drug targets as part of our biotechnology cohort, this budding scientist spends significant time in the lab. His empirical proclivity must have been the motivation for his award-winning computer science project that he presented at the Department of Defense's State and National Junior Science and Humanities Symposium entitled, Becoming a Scientist, a VR Simulation, Making Research More Accessible. This year's J. Wyman Frampton Science Award goes to Henry Lewis.
The Archibald Rutledge Award recognizes exceptional creative expression in any of the various art forms. The award was originally endowed by Harold Scott Newman, a graduate of the Gout School and a former member of the Porter Gout faculty. The award is now given in his memory by Dr. and Mrs. Seaford Rivers Jr. and their son Charlie. There are two components to this award, performance art and visual art. I will begin with the performance art. The performing arts recipient has been involved in all aspects of music and theater at Porter Gout. He has performed in choir, chamber singers, and different parts of the musical since his freshman year. He worked stage crew until a little bird, who's in his family, told me that he had major vocal talents. He has since graced our stage and taken us on journeys as an accomplished actor and vocal talent. Excellence is really the only word to describe him. He shows up to rehearsal for choir, chamber singers, and the musical with lines and lyrics already memorized. He's a leader, he is driven, and he will be sorely missed. The 2023 Rutledge Award for Performing Arts goes to Andrew O'Dell. visual art portion of the award. Over the past three years, this year's recipient has distinguished himself as a true talent in the art classroom, creating a portfolio of work that represents both his individuality and personal experiences. He is steadfast in his passion for art, is a constant source of inspiration, and never fails to provide his peers with encouraging feedback. His art teacher, Ms. Pressler, says of him, his creativity this year allowed him to experiment with less traditional forms of art, and I am so proud of the challenges he overcame and of all that he accomplished. I've enjoyed watching him grow in both skill and confidence during his time here at Porter Gap. And I will continue to admire him as he embarks on his next adventure. Congratulations, Turner, on this well-deserved honor. For his excellence in the classroom and his dedication to the arts, it's my pleasure to present the 2023 Rutledge Award for Visual Art to Turner Law. Senior, best exhibited outstanding qualities of sportsmanship, leadership, and athletic ability. The award is named for the mage, Major Ted Richardson. Mage was not only a legendary teacher and principal, both in the military, but also at Port Gallup. He was also a member of the inaugural Hall of Fame here as well. And when he, when he passed away in 2021, uh, he was the last surviving American veteran of the Battle of Guadalcanal. This year's winner has a special spot in the sports history of our school. He becomes just the third sibling of Cryo Richardson Award recipient to win the award. He's also our second winner in a row to be a four sport athlete, which is an incredible athletic feat. He's been a starter for, for football, basketball, and lacrosse, while also competing at a high level in track and field. Three weeks ago, he won a thrilling state lacrosse championship on Friday night, and then came out Saturday morning to defend his, uh, his titles in both shot put and the discus while helping seal a team state championship. And if that versatility isn't enough, he'll continue his athletic career by playing college football next year at Presbyterian. In an era in which young athletes are encouraged to specialize in a single sport, he provides a great counterexample of what a truly exemplary high school career looks like. Having known and coached Zaire these past seven years, I've grown to know him and his capabilities all too well. From his own words in his speech when he announced his commitment to play football next year, Zaire says, I was a lazy kid who could, could only sometimes show my true talent and potential. I say this not to call him out for those things, but rather to recognize the impact of what taking full stock in yourself can do as you mature and grow as an individual. After practice one day during his junior year, I asked all the linebackers in my group, What's your motivation? What drives you? What's your why? The next day, Z comes up and tells me three things that motivates him. Scripture, his mom and dad, and watching his brother play football in college. 
Zaire became fully aware of his efforts and saw the belief that others had in him, and I saw everything begin to click. The game slowed down for him, and he became a true nightmare for any opponent, no matter what playing surface he was on. There are moments in life when we recognize things that define us, the things that drive us, and then we begin to attack with intentionality those things to make us better people from top to bottom. To go from, I was a lazy kid, to, hey coach, here's three things that drive and motivate me. It's a special thing to be a part of in a young person's life. And to see it all come together the way you all see him now is beyond impressive. It's my honor to present the 2023 Tara Richardson Athletic Award to Zaire Eric Jackson. to present the Faculty Award. This award is presented to a 12th grader whose efforts and achievements during the past year have earned the admiration and respect of the Porter Gala faculty. This year's recipient is a shining example of the power, passion, perseverance, and pursuit of excellence. Her English teacher uses a figure skating analogy to describe her work. Some skaters may have all the technical skills, but don't take creative chances. Others are artistic marvels, but can't lend it an easy stuff. Few, if any, like this amazing student, do both. Her history teacher tips his cap in appreciation of her critical thinking and enthusiasm to learn. Her chemistry teacher wonders if there is really anything that this young lady can do well. This student is simply phenomenal. Just as her computer science teacher was described, this incredible young lady is extraordinary in all that she does. She pushes herself to be better every day. Her enthusiasm doesn't stop within the confines of the classroom. She constantly challenges herself to seek new experiences. Her involvement in various extracurricular activities has been nothing short of remarkable, and she has become the heart and soul of the group she has joined. On stage, she shines brightly, captivating audiences in musicals, plays, choirs, and chamber singers' performance. She's also taken on the role of a service leader, making a significant impact in the Port Gala community. Beyond her achievements, this young lady is a thoughtful, caring, and a cheerful friend to her peers, and a wonderful companion to me during my free period. Her kindness and genuine spirit uplifted those around her, creating a positive and a supportive environment each and every day. I am pleased to announce that this year's faculty award goes to my body, my dearest student, and the best Chinese South Korean lead singer, Anna Allery Lee. student-run organizations of community service, honor council, or student government in recognition of service to the Porter Gow community. Students in these senior leadership positions are elected by their peers and work closely with faculty and administration throughout the year. This year's recipient has demonstrated remarkable flexibility in leading, leading others. Through his term on the Honor Council, he successfully navigated the challenges brought on about by COVID, including conducting hearings on Zoom, 
He took a proactive approach to improving the council's organizational needs, including, including overseeing the uh, digitization of case records and implementing a uniform bylaws. In hearings, his leadership style was characterized by his ability to carefully consider various perspectives, and even when decisions seemed straightforward, ensuring thoroughness and fairness. Furthermore, his strong communication skills have been evident through a complicated and busy year, fostering a productive relationship with the upper school leadership. Beyond his involvement in the Honor Council, his impact as a leader extends to athletics. He added value to the football team where his dedication and drive were evident as he sought to improve himself and those around him. In the spring season, he's been one of the most versatile track athletes in Porter Gout history with an impressive range that spans from the 100 to the 3200 meters. His work ethic is second to none and his deep understanding of the intricacies of track and field make him a brilliant tactical racer modeling exactly what is expected for younger athletes who look up to him for guidance and support. I have no doubt that he will continue to leave a lasting impression as he moves on to the University of South Carolina. In appreciation for his dynamic leadership and advocacy for his fellow students, this year's Head of School Award is presented to Joseph Kelly Farzer. <laughs> You've had favorite classes and developed intellectual passions, but the liberal arts is not just what you study. It's the skills acquired along the way. Critical thinking, creativity, problem solving. A liberal arts education is also how you approach the pursuit of knowledge. The get to learn this versus the have to learn this. More than a stellar academic record, this year's recipient possesses a genuine and irrepressible love of learning. He approaches his studies earnestly and with unwavering enthusiasm. He, as one history teacher puts it, approaches his work with a quiet but steady engagement. He has a tremendous ability to absorb and process information, but more important is his capacity to apply the knowledge he's developed in myriad ways on a test, an essay, a project or in-class discussion. It doesn't matter. He is ready to go from bell to bell and makes every class he is in better. This year, in AP Environmental Science, he heard that his teacher had an interest in carnivorous plants. An enthusiast himself, he brought Ms. Gehring a fallen pitcher from his pitcher plant because he wanted to share it with someone who would truly appreciate it. She said, it was one of the coolest things a student has ever done, to bring me something that he had clearly put so much time and effort into. I think it's a testament to his passion 
being infectious, and his ability to inspire others to explore and appreciate things that they may not have before. His AP biology teacher describes him as the perfect student, always has a positive attitude, and puts his best foot forward. He is incredibly empathetic and authentic with his peers. As the cliche goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. His absence was acutely felt by the Porter Gow community during his semester away at the School for Ethics and Global Leadership in Johannesburg, South Africa. But our temporary loss was their gain, as he made an immediate impact at Siegel. Their academic dean shares, in one of the first lessons in ethics and leadership, we teach four ethical decision-making frameworks to help students navigate their experience in the program. One of those frameworks is Ubuntu, which is a type of relational ethics that sees justice in one's actions that benefits the community and relationships between people. His leadership style embodied this philosophy, earnest, reliable, and welcoming. He became the sounding board for the cohort. Our community sees those same values in his time on the Honor Council, devoting countless hours to upholding and encouraging integrity in the Porter Gout community. Or his countless laps in the pool as a member of the Porter Gout swim team since the sixth grade. Or in the thoroughness and painstaking attention to detail of his AP Studio Art projects. He shares his joy and enthusiasm with everyone around him, and the Porter Gout community is better for it. It is, in turn, a joy to present this year's Trustees Award to Turner Long. Dr. Anthony Tumor Porter Award originated in the spring of 1957 and is the highest award conferred by the school. It was conceived to give recognition to the student who best exemplifies the ideals and emulates the character of the school's founder, Reverend Dr. Anthony Tumor Porter. Loyalty to cause, perseverance in adversity, self-discipline, sensitivity to the needs of others, faith in God and humanity. Candidates for the award are nominated and voted on by the upper school faculty. Dr. Porter was in many respects one of the most extraordinary people to ever come from Charleston. He was brilliant as a scholar, deeply compassionate and merciful in a way that crossed the social barriers of his time, doggedly persistent in those tasks to which God had called him, visionary in the midst of tragedy, possessing an unquenchable hope and optimism that infected and inspired all those who met him and daily devoted and to a deep and unshakable faith in God. Dr. Porter lived during tumultuous times, but was progressive in trying to rebuild and reconcile Charleston after the Civil War. He saw education as a key to recovery and was a visionary for an early school for children of enslaved people as well as a school for girls. His son's death gave him the motive to found Holy Communion Church Institute which evolved into the school we know today. This year's recipient embodies the multifaceted leadership of Dr. Porter, possessing a rare combination of confidence and humble service. Equally comfortable in the spotlight or behind the scenes, he exudes a remarkable level of knowledge and expertise. Throughout his time at Porter Gow, he has earned the utmost respect and admiration from both his peers and the faculty. His curiosity and open-mindedness are matched by his unwavering faith, creating a balanced and resolute approach to life. As the senior warden, he has displayed a remarkable, he's displayed remarkable wisdom, humility, and grace in leading the vestry team, establishing a culture of inclusivity, vulnerability, and warmth in all their gatherings. 
As a leader in the arts, he has taken many young singers under his wing by patiently helping them to learn and master their music. His positive attitude and praise for his peers helps make their performances special. Andrew's kindness, compassion, and selflessness make him a beloved friend to all. And an unwavering principles of integrity serve as a shining example to those around him. I'm honored to present the 2023 Reverend Dr. Anthony Tumor Porter Award to Andrew James O'Dell. Being designated valedictorian is a special honor that reflects years of impeccable performance and motivated hard work. Allow me to tell you more about Turner Long, the valedictorian of the class of 2023. Turner is exceptional in the classroom. He not only thrives, but is a standout across his variety of courses that include advanced study in Chinese, biology, and art. His preparation each day results in stellar performance from the start, and on the rare occasion that he misses the mark, a gentle suggestion from a teacher is all he needs to get right back to excellence. Turner has sought opportunities for growth, spending a semester abroad in South Africa at Siegel, as if traveling 8,000 miles from home wasn't a challenge enough. Turner decided to make this move during a global pandemic discovering that it is possible to miss loved ones at home while also making enduring friendships and memories. He returned from South Africa, embracing a growth mindset and spirit of community that served him well as he re-entered student life back in Charleston. Beyond all the marks on his report card, his contributions as a member of the Honor Council, head service leader, watch magazine writer, and cyclone swimmer have enhanced our school and will be treasured. It is with great honor and pride that I introduce the birthday boy, your 2023 valedictorian. Exactly 19 years ago today, my twin brother Mills and I got into our biggest fight. <laughs> While in the womb, he kicked me, causing my amniotic sac to burst. So we were delivered via an emergency C-section on May 27, 2004 at 8.15 p.m. If Mills' plan had been to get rid of me that day, it backfired. <laughs> The operation allowed me to emerge victorious, claiming the title of the oldest by 30 seconds. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mills. <laughs> I start this speech with this story for a couple of reasons. First, I wanted to end my career here at Porter the same way it started. One of my favorite stories of all time is about little old me entering first grade and meeting Harper Raymond for the first time. Immediately, without even giving her my name, I asked her the question, did you know I'm exactly 30 seconds older than my twin brother? <laughs> she never let me forget it, and I'm glad she didn't, because we have laughed about it for the past 12 years. Another reason I started with this story is because I wanted to talk about coincidences and how I don't believe they exist. Back in freshman year, after I gave my Honor Council election speech that quoted Mr. Greenlaw, he told me that if I ever wanted to win something, to never quote him in his speech. <laughs> As usual, Mr. Greenlaw was right. I didn't win that year. 
Nevertheless, I'm going to quote him again. Just a week ago, I told Mr. Greenwell what I just told you, that I don't believe in coincidences. And to this, he replied with a smile. That's why I call them confluences. Confluences can best be imagined as two rivers merging together at a junction. So isn't it quite the coincidence, or rather confluence, that today, the last Saturday in May, just so happens to be my birthday, the very same day of my high school graduation? I'm not sure about you, but I find it quite, quite strange. But what I find even more strange and even more interesting is that there are so many confluences that have led me and the rest of the class of 2023 exactly to where we are today. And I think we have Porter Gow to thank. Here, we have flown into one another, inspired one another, and learned from one another. Like rivers, each, each of our paths have collided. Porter Gow is the watershed, the area of land where water collects, that has blended our paths, each of our river, rivers, together. That one was for you, Ms. Gehring. So to display the unique environment that Porter Gout has fostered, I wanted to go through some of my favorite confluences with you all. Last month, I struck up a conversation with a man in South Bend, Indiana, named Tom Reynolds. This week, he sent me a copy of one of his books. The dedication page of his book says this, One's great path in life is to a great part determined by the instructive guideposts along the way. These guideposts are teachers and mentors who pointed the way to opportunities and painted a vision of the future. Coincidence that this book and this quote will be sent to me the week I was writing this speech? I think not. Therefore, I would like to thank two faculty members, my guideposts, who I think have truly helped shape my path here at Portico, and who, you guessed it, seem to fall into my life at exactly the right moment and the right time. While I admit that I was upset when Mr. Brennan said he was leaving, and I would need to find a new advisor, I now know that it happened for a reason. I don't think much of what I have done here at PG would have been possible without the guidance from my beloved advisor, Mrs. Caitlin Adelson. And secondly, I would also like to thank my faculty best friend, Ms. Victoria Kutzler. With Ms. Kate's efforts and a true passion for the craft of teaching, she helped me catch up on not one week, not one month, but an entire semester's worth of calculus notes after I'd missed them in the beginning of my junior year. I would like to thank my grandparents, who are all here, by the way, which I find extremely lucky. To my Diddy and Grandma, thank you for choosing the school for your daughter, for crossing paths and listening to the words of Ms. So Quinn, which she suggested that you send Mom to Porter Gal. This singular conversation in approximately 1978 is what allowed me to follow in her footsteps to becoming a cyclone. Not a coincidence. To Bobby and Nana, thank you for your confidence in this school. Nana, I remember when you walked into that lower school office and said your grandsons could be big men on this campus. I would also like to thank my parents for giving me this amazing opportunity and supporting me in every decision I've made in life thus far. And finally, I wanted to reflect on some sweet, funny, and meaningful confidences that have shaped my relationships here at PG. I'm thankful that I was placed in that seventh grade science class with Will Primes, where we, we became lifelong friends. I'm thankful that I decided to participate in that hellish truck, Chuck Drizel basketball camp with Mills and Jazer, where I was able to meet Rowan Sullivan, red Nike glasses and all. I'm even thankful for I'm sure Dr. Westman thinks I have a potty mouth. <laughs> because something vulgar always seems to slip out of my mouth at just the right time when he passes me and Cole Yargo doing our work. While I tried to fit something into this speech for everyone, there's only so much I could do with five to six minutes. But this last reference is for you, Mrs. Downing. A while back, I learned that there is a physics equation dealing with the speed of light and time and many other variables I don't quite understand and won't attempt to explain. The important thing about it is, though, is that when the equation is put in different hypothetical situations, it proves that time is not a constant. That is, time can be manipulated. It blew my mind at first, but as we move forward, class of 2023, I encourage all of you to think in time of time in this way. Today, it has become clear that time is constantly moving forward, but that it is not a constant itself. Time has no set value or definition, so do with it what you want. Strive for the un unachievable. There's an old Arabian proverb that states, 
He who wants the incarnation endure the saints. I encourage each and every one of you to brave those saints and push towards goals when everything seems to want to stop you. And how should you do that? By paying attention and recognizing the signs that make your paths clear. By believing that there are no coincidences. After all, it's how I decided where I wanted to spend the next four years of my life in college. The story goes like this. In art class, I'd finish a portrait of Nelson Mandela, but something was off with it. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, and it wasn't until David Axon took a look at it that we figured out Mandela was missing an eyebrow. <laughs> I had literally forgotten to draw one of his eyebrows. <laughs> Two weeks later, my dad and I visited the University of Notre Dame for the first time. While marveling at the mural painted under the Golden Dome, the tour guide mentioned that when painting the mural in 1876, the artist, Luigi Gregory, had made a peculiar mistake. But he didn't notice it until an onlooker pointed it out. The artist had forgotten to paint an eyebrow on one of the angels. I had unknowingly committed the same mistake 147 years later. There are no coincidences. I would originally promised myself I wouldn't talk about my semester abroad in South Africa during my speech, but there is one particular moment I feel envelops most of what we as a class are experiencing right now. The feeling as our paths slowly begin to diverge. As I was departing Charleston, I turned around at the final security checkpoint and looked at the faces of my parents. Both of them were crying. I then looked to their side and I saw Mills was crying. Coleman wasn't. <laughs> So I'm not exactly sure what that says about him. <laughs> I also later got an aggravated phone call from him in which he complained that everybody was being too dramatic. <laughs> anyway, Mills was crying, and it hurt me to see my other half so distraught. I wondered how I had ever gotten through those 30 seconds on Earth without him, when I was born and he wasn't yet. <laughs> if you know Mills at all, you know he doesn't cry. But all that crying I've seen this week, and all that crying in the airport, reminded me of a quote I stumbled upon some time ago. Airports see more sincere kisses than wedding halls, and the walls of hospitals have heard more prayers than the walls of churches and mosques, because love is felt most when it's leaving. Congratulations again to the class of 2023. It has been an honor to love each and every one of you like a family. Remember to follow your heart, but also follow the signs of the universe. Our paths are bright, but they are only ever visible when we are present with others who will light the way. Which is to say, don't take for granted the people that sit by you in this moment, because every interaction you have with one, or one another is no coincidence. As you head into these next coming weeks and are surrounded by the criers, know that it's because they're sincere and that they love you, because love is felt most when it's leaving. Thank you. Mr. Eggleston, Mr. Buxton, and members of the Board of Trustees, it is my distinct pleasure to inform you that each student receiving a Porter Gallup School Diploma this evening has met all the graduation requirements in accordance with the policies and procedures of the upper school. Therefore, on behalf of the upper school faculty and staff, I present to you the class of 2023. Out of respect for the graduates and their families, we ask that you refrain from yelling at the time of boarding of the diploma. You are welcome to applaud after each graduate receives their diploma. Please note in the program, graduates with an asterisk next to their name will be identified this evening as recipients of Porter Gallup's highly distinguished diploma. This diploma recognizes the outstanding academic achievement through their selection to the Porter Gallup chapter of the National Cum Laude and Honor Society. As I call your name, please, please proceed to the stage to receive your diploma and have your picture taken. Lucas Daniel Acevedo. Lucas will attend Michigan State University. Chloe Nicole Alderson, 
Chloe earned high honor roll for the year, and she will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Chloe will attend the University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Hayden Christopher Alfonso. Hayden earned high honor roll for the year. Hayden will attend the University of Colorado Boulder. Jaser Jamal Amer. Jaser will, Jaser will attend Swanee, the University of the South. <laughs> Logan Rhett Andrews. Rhett earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Rhett will attend Middlebury College. James Henry Apple. Henry will attend the University of Miami. <laughs> Swain Robert Autry. Swain will attend Swanee, the University of the South. David Neil Axon. David earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. David will attend Duke University. <laughs> Charles Daniel Basto. Charles will attend Tulane University. Elizabeth Carson Batten. Carson earned high honor roll for the year. Carson will attend the University of South Carolina. <laughs> Emily Lynn Benesuni. Emily earned high honor roll for the year. Emily will attend the University of South Carolina. Charles Marion Black. Charles earned high honor roll for the year. Charles will attend Furman University. <laughs> Kamavi Najay Blake. Kamavi will attend Purdue University. Joseph Kelly Carswell. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly earned high honor roll for the year. Kelly will attend the University of South Carolina. <laughs> Joseph Salvador Carter. Joey will attend the University of California, Santa Cruz. Avery Shea Chambers. Avery earned high honor roll for the year and she will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Avery will attend Auburn University. <laughs> would Porter Gallup Trustee Hank Chavez please come forward to present the following diploma. Langdon Hall Chavez. Langdon will attend the University of Alabama. McKinley Catherine Coles. McKinley will attend High Point University. <laughs> Michael Francis Coles. Michael will attend Flagler College. Burke 
Grimes III, Will earned my honor roll for the year. Will plans to attend Furman University. Ethan Scott Kerb. Ethan earned my honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Port Young Highly Distinguished Diploma. Ethan will attend Rice University. Janine Ramos. Yeah, Janine! Janine will attend Charleston Southern University. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Louise Stapleton Darwin. Say earned high honor roll for the year. Say Say will attend Pepperdine University. Jaquez Demel Dash Green. Jaquez will attend the University of South Carolina Upstate. <laughs> Drew David Despos. Drew will attend Arizona State University. William Porcher Dower, Shea will attend Sewanee, the University of the South. <laughs> Andrew Jonathan DeSalle, Andrew earned high honor roll for the year. Andrew will attend South Southern Methodist University. Jensen Wilder Esty. Jensen will attend the University of South Carolina. <laughs> Charles Hale Ferguson. Hale will attend the University of Mississippi. Robert Patton Galloway. Patton earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Young Highly Distinguished Diploma. Patton will attend Duke University. <laughs> Joseph Matthew Gladstein. Joe will take a gap year. Lower School Assistant Head Brandon Greenslade, please come forward to present the following diploma. Dylan Walter Greenslade. Dylan earned high honor roll for the year. Dylan will attend Loyola Marymount University. Faculty members Emma and Chris Greenwell, please come forward to present the following diploma. Camille Madeline Greenwell. Camille will attend the University of South Carolina. Ava Claire Carreri. Ava will attend University of Georgia. <laughs> Paul McLean.
McClellan Hassel, Mapleton University of Miami. <laughs> Madison Georgia Hicks, Madison Watten Clemson University. Harrison Lynn Hughes, Harrison Watton, University of South Carolina. <laughs> Would Oakland faculty member Lisa Ibsen please come forward to present the following diploma? Emily Claire Ibsen. Emily earned high honor roll for the year and she will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Emily will attend Clemson University. <laughs> will Porter Gallup trustee Eric Jackson please come forward to present the following diploma. Zaire Eric Jackson. Zaire will attend Presbyterian College. <laughs> Maya Jewel Johnson. Maya will attend Pennsylvania State University. Thomas M. L. King. Thomas earned high honor roll for the year. Thomas will attend Clemson University. <laughs> Anne Colin Keating. Annie earned high honor roll for the year. Annie will attend University of South Carolina. Kira Parker Kelleher. Kira earned high honor roll for the year. Kira will attend University of Miami. <laughs> Summers Calhoun Kirk. Summers earned high honor roll for the year. Summers will attend Wofford College. Jessica Marie Klum. Jessica will attend the University of Kentucky. <laughs> Kate Elizabeth Kowalski. Kate earned high honor roll for the year. Kate will attend the United States Air Force Academy. <laughs> Benjamin Beach Cool. Beach earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Beach will attend the University of Virginia. <laughs> Ava Lee Lamberson. Ava earned high honor roll for the year. Ava will attend Boston College. Matthew Fritz Larkin. Matt earned high honor roll for the year. Matt will attend Elon University.
Jacqueline Pierce Lashley, Pierce Wood County University of Denver. Would faculty member Dr. Aaron Lehman please come forward to present the following diploma? Anna Ellery Lehman. Anna earned high honor roll for the year and she will be receiving the Porter Dow Highly Distinguished Diploma. Anna will attend Yale University. Ethan Joseph Lehrman. Ethan earned the high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gow Highly Distinguished Diploma. Ethan will attend the University of Edinburgh. <laughs> James Best Letton V. Jimmy will attend the University of South Carolina. Georgia Murphy Lewis. Georgia earned high honor roll for the year. Georgia will attend Loyola Marymount University. <laughs> Henry Bryce Lewis. Henry earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Henry will attend the University of California, Los Angeles. Would Oakman faculty member Virginia Livingston please come forward to present the following diploma. Jackson Davis Livingston. Jack will attend the University of Colorado Boulder. Mills Cassis Long. Mills earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Mills will attend the University of Virginia. <laughs> Turner Walter Long. Turner earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Turner will attend the University of Notre Dame. Cameron Christine Lorenz. Cameron earned high honor roll for the year. Cameron will attend Auburn University. <laughs> Dorothy Weatherby Lucas. Dee Dee will attend University of Georgia. Ian Christopher McLean. Ian will attend Northeastern University. <laughs> Alexis Grace Manis. Alexis earned high honor roll for the year. Alexis will attend Clemson University. Bryce Catherine Hamilton Marion. Bryce earned high honor roll for the year. Bryce will attend Clemson University. <laughs> Caitlin Carmichael McCauley. Caitlin earned high honor roll for the year. Caitlin will attend Chapman University. Would Oakland faculty member Kristen Miller please come forward to present the following diploma. 
Cora Elizabeth Miller, Cora Wotan, Sanford University. <laughs> Daniel Bernard Mierblatt, Daniel Wotan, George Washington University. Staff member Ellen O'Dell, please come forward to present the following diploma. Andrew James O'Dell. Andrew, Andrew earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gale Highly Distinguished Diploma. Andrew will attend Furman University. <laughs> Jalise Marie Otero. Jalise earned my honor roll for the year. Jalise will attend Louisiana State University. <laughs> Nate Wagner Owenby. Nate will attend Clemson University. Anna Barry Pfeiffer. Anna will attend Elon University. <laughs> Bo Reverend Victor Porter. Bo earned high honor roll for the year. Bo will attend the University of South Carolina Honors College. John Dunstan Powell IV. JD will attend the University of Miami. <laughs> Benjamin Joseph Brenner. Ben will attend Colorado State University. Sarah Elizabeth Quinn. Sarah will attend Paris Scholars at George Washington University. <laughs> Ryan Tweed Regan. Ryan will attend Tufts University. Harper Louise Raymond. Harper earned high honor roll for the year. Harper will attend University of Tennessee, Knoxville. <laughs> Nora Nicole Rismani. Nora earned high honor roll for the year. Nora will attend Nova Southeastern University. Owen Thomas Rogers. No. Owen earned high honor roll for the year. Owen will attend Clemson University. <laughs> Lily Kate Rowley. Lily Kate earned high on her high honor roll for the year. Lily Kate will attend the University of Florida. Darius John Rucker. Jack will attend New York University. <laughs> Sienna Reedy Shea. Sienna earned high honor roll for the year and she will be receiving the Porter Gown Highly Distinguished Diploma. Sienna will attend Colorado College. Amelia England Shuffler. Muffy will attend the University of Mississippi. <laughs> Campbell 
Fayette Vest Skelly, Campbell Watten, Rollins College. Elizabeth Middleton Stoveland, Lisi Woten, Lehigh University. <laughs> Fordham Barnett Smith, Fordham Earned High Honor Roll for the Year, Fordham Woten, United States Merchant Marine Academy. With Porter Gale faculty member Anna Smith, please come forward to present the following diploma. Shay Latimer Smith. Shay earned high honor roll for the year and she will be receiving the Porter Gale Highly Distinguished Diploma. Shay will attend the University of South Carolina. Susanna Jane Snyder. Susanna will attend Elon University. <laughs> Asa Jean Snyder. Asa will attend Furman University. Rowan Richard Sullivan. Rowan earned high honor roll for the year. Rowan will attend Vanderbilt University. <laughs> Anna Caroline Simons. Anna Caroline earned high honor roll, and she will be receiving the Porter Gow Highly Distinguished Diploma. Anna Caroline will attend Dartmouth College. Jolene Catherine Temple. Jolene will attend the College of Charleston. <laughs> Jacqueline Ann Thompson. Ann will be receiving the Porter Gallon Highly Distinguished Diploma. Ann will attend Davidson College. Porter Gale trustee Jamie Tossie, please come forward to present the following diploma. Luca Thomas Tossie. Luca earned high honor roll for the year. Luca will attend the University of Miami. Joseph Virgilio the Fourth. Joey earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Porter Gallup Highly Distinguished Diploma. Joey will attend the University of Colorado Boulder. <laughs> Hannah Middleton Wallace. Hannah earned high honor roll for the year. Hannah will attend Trident Technical College. George Fonnell Walton IV. George will attend the University of South Carolina. Jared William Wilder. Jared will attend Hampton University. Taylor Wilson de Briano. Ashley will attend Savannah College of Art and Design. <laughs> Anna Hunter Woods. Anna Hunter will attend the University of Alabama. Vivian Bachman Wara. Vivian earned high honor for the year. 
Vivian Wotan Dickinson College. Joseph Coleman Yarborough. Cole earned high honor roll for the year and he will be receiving the Quarter Gown Highly Distinguished Diploma. Cole will attend Stanford University. <laughs> Max Sibluski. Max earned high honor roll for the year. Max will attend Clemson University Honors College. Porter Dow's graduating class of 2023, know that we are all proud of you and that we love you. And as you go forth from this place, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God with the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.